Welcome back. Today we're making a tuxedo cake, just like those ones you see in Sam's Club. In a large bowl with a sifter on top, I'm going to add in 1 and 3 fourths cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I will then add in 3 fourths a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. Then we have 1 teaspoon of baking powder, 1 and a half teaspoons of baking soda, and finally a teaspoon of salt. We'll then sift those into the large bowl. Our goal here is to make sure we don't have any clumps in our flour, especially with that cocoa powder that tends to be clumped up in there. So I'm just going to take a spoon and kind of smush it through the rest of the way. Now that it's all sifted, I'm going to add in two cups of granulated sugar. Then I'll give everything a quick mix. For our wet ingredients, I'm first going to need one cup of buttermilk. I'm making my own out of a combination of a tablespoon of lemon juice and then the rest of it being whole milk. I will then be cracking two eggs and adding them into the dry ingredients. Along with the eggs, I'll be adding in one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then by that point, my buttermilk is ready. So that will go into the bowl. And then we'll be putting in a half cup of vegetable oil. Now it's ready to be mixed up. That initial mix is done. It'll be time to put in one cup of hot coffee. I suggest mixing this slowly it's going to make your batter very thin, but it's still going to turn out to an excellent cake. I've parchment papered and greased my baker's half sheet pan, and I'm going to add the cake mixture to that. Once it's ready to go, I'm going to pop it into a preheated 350 degree oven where I will bake it for roughly 15 minutes. When it's finished baking, let it cool completely before handling. For our mousse layer, I'm going to start with a microwave safe bowl where I'm going to put one and a quarter cups of chocolate chips in it. I will microwave it until I can get it melted down. In another bowl, I will be adding a third of a cup of hot water along with three tablespoons of cocoa powder. I'm going to mix that up well. After that's fully mixed up, I will be adding it in slowly to the melted chocolate where I will again give it a good whisk. Once everything is incorporated, set it off to the side to let it cool completely before adding the whipped cream. In another large bowl, I'm going to add one and a half cups of heavy cream. I'm going to mix that up with my electric mixer until it starts to thicken up to create the whipped cream. Once that's done, I will add in five tablespoons of powdered sugar and continue to mix that up until that's all incorporated. Once that chocolate is cool, we're going to pour that into the whipped cream and then we're going to fold it in. You don't want to make that whipped cream fall flat. You're creating a mousse here. This is what the mousse looks like when it's done. So pop it into the fridge while we make the rest of our stuff. For the cream cheese layer, we're going to need a cup of heavy whipping cream that's going to be whipped up into whipped cream again. Then we're going to take one eight ounce block of cream cheese, softened, put that into a bowl. My bowl was way too small, but begin to whip, mix that up. I'll then add in one and a half cups of powdered sugar and I'll continue to mix that until that cream cheese powdered sugar mixture becomes quite creamy. At that point, I'm ready to add in that whipped cream that I created. Again, it'll be folded in. You do not want to deflate that whipped cream. Now for the ganache. In a glass bowl, I'm going to put one and a quarter cups of chocolate chips. I'm going to warm up over the stove one cup of heavy whipping cream. I just want that to slightly simmer. I'll then pour that over the chocolate chips, then cover the bowl with a plate and let it set for five minutes. After five minutes, remove the plate, carefully stir those melted chocolate chips and heavy cream together. It will slowly thicken up and as it continues to sit after you're finished stirring, it will continue to thicken. Now I'm ready to start assembling. I removed the cake from the pan. It should come out quite easily. My mistake here was that I did not refrigerate this cake. I was moving along quickly to get this done. It should have been refrigerated first. I'm going to cut the cake down the middle. This is going to make two eight inch cakes. Then after those middle slices, I'm going to cut it into thirds to create the three layers in each of the cakes. At this point, it would also be best if you would trim the edges to remove that rounded look if you didn't want it. I'm then gonna remove one layer at a time and begin assembling the cake. My first layer after the cake is going to be the mousse. 
Make sure you don't leave that mousse sit in the fridge too long before you want to use it or else it will be hard to spread it across the whole cake. Make sure it's not mounted up in the middle. You want it evenly spread from middle to the outside edge. I added the next layer of cake and then it was time for the cream cheese layer. Again, make sure as you're putting this on there that you spread it out very evenly. You don't want a mound in the middle and then the edges going lower. Now it was time for the last layer of cake and then I made sure if there was any filling lacking anywhere that I filled that in. A few more tips when assembling this cake. I was trimming my pieces after the cake was made. I shouldn't have did that. I should have trimmed them all up in the beginning. This cake right here was my extra cake for my family and I was testing things out. Because my cake wasn't cold, my top layer was really struggling and wanted to fall apart on me. Cold cake plus hot knife equals a nice clean cut, I also found out. So when everything's cold, it just works out a lot better for cutting through. All right, back to finishing the assembly. Now we're gonna add on the last layer, which is the ganache on top. Make sure you don't pour on too much so that you don't have it dripping down the edges of the cake, unless that's how you want it. You can smooth it out perfectly on top, or I just took a microplane and some white chocolate chips and put some white chocolate shavings across the top of it. Then I made up just a couple of little chocolate details for my best friend's 40th birthday, and there you go, the cake's complete. Again, this makes enough for two 8-inch cakes, so you can have one to practice on first before you make one for a special occasion. My family absolutely loved this and said it was better than the Sam's Club one. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and give this recipe a try.